Good morning. A call to order our regular meeting of the Zoning and Planning Committee. Today is October 27, 2016. I'm Lisa Bender. I chair the committee. Today we have Council Members Reich, Goodman, and Warsami. We are a quorum of this committee. We have three items on today's agenda. One is a public hearing, which we'll return to after the consent items. So I'll move to consent, which item number two is passage of an ordinance amending our Heritage Preservation Commission membership ordinance. I'll just note that this is to make the regulations more like the ones that we have for our other boards and commissions. Item number three is passage of an ordinance amending our zoning code related to floodplain regulations and maps consistent with the requirements of the National Flood Insurance Program. I'll move up items two and three, see if there's any discussion. I will just note on item three, we had quite a lot of public testimony at the Planning Commission. Um, many properties are being taken out of the National Flood Insurance Program and others are being added. And our staff is working closely with the property owners who've had concerns about what it means to be inside that floodplain area. So with that, uh, all in favor of items two and three, please say aye, aye, any opposed, and that carries. Item number one is a certificate of appropriateness appeal for 419 Washington Avenue North. We'll start with staff. I'll note that this is the first step in the process that this project would then go back through the Planning Commission for its land use approvals. Good morning, Chair Bender, members of the committee. Before you today is an appeal of the Heritage Preservation Commission's approval of a certificate of appropriateness application at 419 Washington Avenue North. The appellant in this case is a neighbor. Background on the property, it's an irregularly sharp shaped parcel, uh, which consists of two combined lots over a vacated alley. It's located in the Warehouse Historic District. There is an existing building at 411 Washington. Um, it's an office building, which is called the Internet Exchange Building, and that was constructed in 1914. And then closer to the intersection of Fifth Avenue North and Third Street North, there is a surface parking lot. This was the former site of the Haywood Paper Manufacturing Company. Um, that building was demolished in 1967, and the lot has been a surface parking lot since that time. Here's an aerial photo um, of the site showing the large surface parking lot and the existing building that faces Washington. The application that has been appealed is the HBC's approval of a certificate of appropriateness uh, for the construction of a new building on that surface parking lot portion of the site and the construction of a connection from between the new building and the existing building that fronts on Washington. Just a few historic photos. This photo is taken from the Third Street Viaduct looking towards the site. Uh, the Third Street Viaduct has since been demolished and Third Street North is a dead end street in this location. And you can see that Haywood Manufacturing Building in the photo on the right. This is a historic aerial photo from uh, 1938 where you can see the two buildings on the site. I would also note that you can see that there was a rail spur that um, came from the rail yards down uh, what is now the alley between Washington Avenue North and Third Street North. And then looking at this fire insurance map, you can also see those two buildings on the site. And I would also note from in this image, you can see that there was a bridge connecting or at some sort of a connection between the Haywood Manufacturing Building and the building at the corner of Washington and Fifth Avenue. Um, here's a current aerial photo uh, of how the site looks today. And then uh, moving on to the current proposal, this is the elevation of the proposed office building that would face Fifth Avenue North. Here you can also see the proposed connection to that existing building, the Internet Exchange Building on Washington. This is where there would be, the Fifth Avenue side is where there would be retail and restaurant uses as well as the main pedestrian entrance to the offices. This is the elevation that would face Third Street North. This is the elevation that would face uh, the rail yards. And then finally, the elevation that would face the alley. And then there you can see the connection as well. Um, to look at the proposal in section, you can see that there's eight levels of parking proposed, two of which are entirely underground, um, as well as seven levels of office space above that. And then the HPC, so on September 27th, the HPC voted to approve the certificate of appropriateness subject to several conditions. They actually struck several of the conditions that, of approval that had been recommended by staff, including uh, one that was related to the design of the recessed entry on Fifth Avenue North. Um, another 
condition of approval that had been recommended was related to the windows on 3rd Street North. And then they also struck a condition of approval that staff had recommended that the above grade parking that was proposed should be lined with active uses. Um, since they st struck that condition of approval, they also added another condition of approval related to the design of that above grade parking, um, specific design elements that would minimize the impact of the parking that's above grade. The appeal um, is generally, uh, the, appear, the concern appears to generally be related to the height and scale of the proposal. Here you can see a rendering of the proposed building um, in its surrounding context. The warehouse district design guidelines were adopted in 2010 and we have specific guidelines related to scale. These are the scale guidelines that would apply to this particular site. So the guidelines state that the height of the building sh of a new building should be between two and 10 stories. And then there's specific guidelines about floor heights. Um, so just to give a little context on that guideline, uh, the warehouse historic district is split into several sub areas based on the different characters uh, or the different character of this certain areas within the district based on when most of the buildings were built. So this property is located, as I said, in the 20th century um, sub area of the district where uh, historically buildings were between four and 10 stories tall. So the guidelines allow for 10 to two to 10 stories for new construction. In the 19th century warehouse, uh, the guidelines call for new buildings to be between two and six stories. And then in the smaller rail yard section, the guidelines actually allow up to 20 stories for new construction. Um, there has been some confusion uh, about the height of this building. So I did want to explain that. Um, so as you can see from the diagram, um, that from the exterior of the building, the building appears to be 10 stories. Um, however, when you look at it in section, and if you were to use the uh, specific zoning code definitions of height and stories, the building would be 15 stories, 13 of which would be in the main structure and then two additional stories on the rooftop. The building is located in the B4N uh, downtown neighborhood district where the maximum height is 10 stories or 140 feet, whichever is less. And you can also see in the diagram where the proposal would be exceeding both of those uh, requirements. Um, I would note um, that if the proposal is approved at this height, they do have the next step to, as uh, council member Bender noted um, to go to the planning commission and they would need to request a conditional use permit to increase the maximum height of the building. Um, so just to summarize the staff analysis of that particular guideline, um, part of analyzing the certificate of appropriateness applications is uh, the making the finding that the alterations are consistent with the applicable design guidelines that have been adopted by the HPC. Um, so staff took into consideration that the design guidelines do not specify an explicit rule of measurement for stories, and they do not explicitly give a maximum height for buildings um, in terms of feet. And since the building is designed to appear as if it is 10 stories from the exterior, not including the rooftop structures, uh, staff found that that met, met the intent of the guidelines. Um, we also noted that because of the above grade parking, having shorter floor plates, and then the retail level of the building having taller floor plates, um, that overall floor heights evened out to generally meeting the intent of the guidelines. Uh, several public comments have been received, um, mostly noting concern about the height and the scale of the, the proposed building, um, and you have received all of those in your packets. And um, I'll just conclude there and leave up the HPC's action and then take any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Okay, so I will go ahead and open the public hearing. I'll note that we have in our packets the full um, transcript from the HPC hearings as well. Uh, so why don't we start with the uh, applicant, the project team, come on up. And then we'll have the appellant speak. Good morning, committee members. Um, I'm Carol Lansing, representing the developer, North Loop Partners. They also own this property. Um, I work at Bakery Baker Daniels. I'm an attorney, 90 South 7th Street. And I will let the um, AV people know that Low Tech Me is using the overhead projector. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> 
I handed out, because I wasn't sure if it was in your packets, the letters of support from the North Loop Neighborhood Association. Um, the project team met with them twice in May and again in August after there had been some uh, project changes and went through the project in detail and both times they issued letters of support. Um, as uh, Lisa noted, the primary concerns in the appeal seem to relate to the height of the building and um, she went through that in, in great detail, kind of said most of what I hope to say uh, that it does meet the intent of the guidelines because it appears as a 10-story building. Um, careful attention was paid to that to mask those parking floors so it will not look like a parking ramp and to um, have the design look like 10 stories. Um, she's, er, and she said it's by zoning 15 stories and look that's 13 floors including the compressed parking floors and then the height of the penthouses. Um, I think what I can add to what she explained is that this compares favorably with the Ford Center, which is a historic 10-story building uh, down 5th Street. So this shows buildings along 5th Avenue, I'm sorry. This is the proposed project. This is the Ford Center. And the Ford Center is, like I said, 10 stories. It's actually four feet taller if you compare uh, parapet to parapet height. And then both of them have mechanicals that extend above it. So we also believe it's consistent with the scale of the warehouse district, which has a variety of building heights. The, um, this shows surrounding uses, and I just want to point out that this is the project site. There's, it's separated by an alley and streets and the railroad corridor from other buildings. Um, it's not next to any residential buildings. Um, it does not block important views, and it uh, um, has good doesn't, its height does not create any issues related to access to light, air, and those other concerns that people want to pay attention to with the height of a building. Let's see. Then they also, um, in the appeal, mentioned some questions about the Skyway. Um, this Skyway connection is an important part of the project because it provides accessibility, an accessible route into the Internet Exchange Building, which currently does not have ADA accessibility. And the parking in this building, part of it will serve the Internet Exchange building. It's being built on a surface parking lot that currently serves Internet Exchange. They are on the same um, tax parcel. It isn't particularly visible. It'll be screened by buildings, um, and it is set back from the public street. So that, too, will not cause any problems with, with view or, or shadowing. Um, it will have minimal impacts on the historic building. It's not going to be on a... It's considered an addition to the historic building. It's not on the front facade or a character-defining facade. And uh, the staff um, looked at the care that will be used to attach it and felt that it met those guidelines also for that minor addition. There is also historic precedent for a skyway there. This is the building that used to be on the project site. Um, this is the... Um, this is the Skyway that used to exist there. I'm not sure if I have this lined up right. I don't. Let's, if you look at it this way, this is Washington. This is the rail corridor. This is the Internet Exchange. And that's the historic Skyway. Let's see. There, weren't, there was not much else that was expressed in the appeal for us to respond to. If you have questions, the project team is here. Any questions about the design? We do urge you to deny the appeal. This is going to be, you know, replacing a surface parking lot with a great brick building, uh, filling in the urban fabric of a historic district in an appropriate way, bringing over 200,000 square feet of new modern office space to an area that's getting pretty hot for new office users. Thank, Thank you. you. We do have a question from Councilmember okay. Goodman. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ms. Lansing, what was the height of the building that was there historically prior to this new construction? I don't know. It's It's been a surface parking lot for some time, and I don't know the height of the building it's replacing. I believe it was not 10 stories. I believe it was shorter. It looks like staff may know that answer. Are there any other questions for Ms. Lansing? Um, I'm, I'm just wondering. Well, I want to hear from staff first. Um, it appears I, there's only one historic photo, but it appears to have been a four-story building. I, I'm interested in how you actually make the case that 10 stories is consistent with the surrounding properties, because it's not. 
I mean, you, your own photos show that it's not. And wanting something bigger doesn't mean it's consistent with the surrounding character of the buildings. Ford Center, I don't think is a fair comparison, although I'll use it as a comparison. It's existing. It was there over history. Mm -hmm. This is new construction. So within new construction, you have the ability to abide by the code under B4N. And I have a lot of B4N in my ward. And quite frankly, I'd be telling developers in my ward, build to what the code allows. Don't look for any exception you can have because we don't have enough parking in the neighborhood and we want to have more parking. And that has been the tone and tenor of the comments from North Loop since I've read their documents. They, they're happy about it because they want parking. Mm -hmm. Yippee, I'm glad they want parking. But the bottom line is there's no reason to vary, in my opinion, from the code because 10 stories, 140 feet is generous already in a historic district where everything else is like four, five, six stories. Mm -hmm. So what is your response to this is consistent with the character of the existing neighborhood? Well, we are looking at the guidelines, which looked at the character of the 20th century warehouse district and concluded that buildings from two to 10 stories are consistent with the character of that area. Um, so I did, you know, this is 10 stories. There appears to be 10 stories and we're working with the historic district guidelines, which don't establish a, a limit in terms of feet. Um, that is an issue that, you know, a CUP will have to be approved for that for the zoning. But looking at the, what we're given in the guidelines as character of the historic district, um, you don't have to look at just the immediately surrounding buildings. You look at the district as a whole and, and the guideline is. What are some of the other buildings that are 10 stories? I would, I would say they're more on the other side of the rail yard. Um, this is kind of closer to downtown than the, the warehouse district extends, you know, further up Washington. Um, I know there's seven and eight story buildings on Washington. Just tell me what other. I think the, y, the I'm going to say it right, the Wyman building on the other side of the rail track, I think might be. So I, didn't, I didn't do a survey. I can't, I cannot give you. But you guys survey. are making an argument that you should go to 10 stories because that's consistent with the character, yet you can only come up with two buildings in the entire district that are 10 stories. I don't think it's a very good case. I represented this area for 10 years mm -hmm. and we didn't approve buildings at 10 stories. And the developer actually built a number of projects in my ward during that time. Um, and many developers did, and none of them were at this height. Well, you know, we're doing, it's a longer term construction style with the co concrete, you can go higher. A lot of the buildings that have been built in the district are six stories because they were using just the stick frame construction style. It wasn't, and, and they were in part of the district. If you're going first, that was more residential and lower scale. Could I actually ask, I don't want to get too much into the land use applications, but um, there was a lot of discussion about the parking at the HPC um, and just maybe following up. Could you talk about the parking? It, I believe this project will need a conditional use permit for district parking in, as part of its land use applications. So just talk about how much parking there is, how much is serving the use, principal use versus district parking. And I'd be interested in understanding how that's driving the design of the building or mm -hmm. sort of how that goes in terms of the height. Um, there will, there's two areas of parking. One is below grade and one is above. Um, the above grade parking uh, will serve the uses on site, which include the internet exchange building. And there will be, get the notes, I think approximately 275 parking spaces in the above grade. Um, we have not had this discussion with staff yet, but I believe that that's less than the maximum for accessory parking when you look at the new office, the existing uses internet exchange in the retail um, restaurant areas. Below grade for public, there'll be about 205 spaces. And that is, you know, there's no other public parking uh, in close proximity. Uh, that will serve other office users in the area, um, other residents, and anybody really from the public that wants to come in. And can then you just say how many stories of above ground parking there are? Have a... it's, it's, it is in here, but I just wanted to make sure that we are clear. And then I, I know that the appellants are also ready to speak. I just want to note that we'll, <laughs> that's next on, on the. Uh, this is one section of the above grade um, because of the angles. There's, you know, four to five. If you count it back here, this is along the rail corridor, five levels. Here there's four, they are short floors. Um, so that's 
compressed. They are flat plates, so they are convertible. If uh, um, they'll be built with flat plates, and it would be possible if the parking isn't needed and things change in the future to convert that to office space. Looking at the section from fifth, it appears more like three levels. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions for the applicant? There are none. So we will then turn to the folks who've appealed the project. I know you have materials prepared for us. Uh, I actually do have a question. She said that there's. Are, are you going to speak on behalf of the yeah. appellant? Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you then please uh, state your name and address for the record? <laughs> do you need us to get this put up on the computer? Um, I think I have it up already. Okay. Maybe staff can help get set up and then yeah. we can proceed with your testimony. And if you do have any questions, you can note them as you go and we can have staff respond or. Okay. Um, my name is Jared Bromley. I filed this appeal and uh, I live at 618 Washington Avenue. Um, I do have one question. She said that there's not any parking around the area of this building. Um, well, there is one parking ramp right next to this building and then there is also parking all along the 4th Street ramp. Um, so I don't know if that's a true statement. So how did this appeal all come about? After reading an article online by the Star Tribune, I noticed the sheer, the sheer size of this building and was worried about the historical t integrity of the North Loop being compromised for parking. I called my city councilman, Jacob Fry, in Ward 3. He basically told me that it does fit historic guidelines and there's not much we can do. I requested information on the building that he assisted, that he said his assistant would email me, which I never received. So I went on my own to figure out how to file this appeal. That's when I got in touch with Lisa Steiner. The purpose of my appeal is not to stop this project. No one wants this project more than me. I love the North Loop. I met my wife in the North Loop. I got engaged in the North Loop. I got married in the North Loop. We're planning on having a baby in the North Loop. We are the North, North Loop resident families. What I want to do is find middle ground to follow our historic guidelines. The Minneapolis Heritage Preservation Commission should not have approved this project. It clearly does not fit the historic guidelines. This, the HPC is supposed to help preserve the community's unique identity, culture, and character by protecting significant historic resources from the city's past. This is why we have all these resources. We have a warehouse historic guideline. We have the HPC. The CPD, CPED staff report states the building is designed to appear as the a 10 story from the exterior, though it also includes several additional shorter levels of above grade parking. Per the zoning code definition of height and stories, the building would be at least 13 story building, including the rooftop mechanical and elevator overruns. And I kind of, I have a little drawing up there where it shows one through 14. So let's go to the historic guidelines. Section 325, height of a building shall be between two and 10 stories. Once again, two and 10 stories. Not a 13 story building, not a 160 foot building as a 13 story building. Not a 13 story plus mechanical rooftop. Not a 14 story due to a grade change. These rules are pretty clear to me, 10 stories. So why is adding more floors an issue? Well, this is not the last building that will be built in the North Loop and it will set a dangerous precedence. Are we gonna 
allow bending the rules on all projects. Moving forward, are we going to allow 14 story buildings plus mechanical with 10 foot floor plates, breaking our historic guidelines? Increasing the neighbor's density and increasing the traffic issues on Washington Avenue. Ever since we've made that a two lane road, traffic going in, the city has been just ridiculous. You can't even take a left out of certain driveways or um, roads. <laughs> Okay, here's my next reasoning here. So the city of Minneapolis does not have a minimum on parking, but they do have a maximum. The maximum for this parking is 328 parking stalls. And the one thing that can worry me is the floor plates in this building were made to be flat floor plates, which is a good thing if we need to use them in the future. Um, but who's to say Google doesn't come here or Amazon wants more space and they come to the developer and say, hey, you have nine and a half foot floor plates with city views. Why do you have parking there? Why don't we have more office space? So then we fill up 60,000 square feet of office space, losing that parking and right back to the same issue. Historic guideline 326, the first floor height shall be between 14 and 21 stories and the upper story height between 10 and 14. The main thing I wanna point out here is not eight stories of nine and a half feet floors. We need the North Loop Planning and Zoning Committee and the HPC to push back on developers to keep our building heights to scale. If a developer wants a 10 story building, that's fine. We just have to suggest shorter floor plates. We know that these developers always try to push the max and variances on everything. So we'll go to, back to the historic guidelines on page 29. Section 3.27, consider the footprints of the adjacent buildings along the block face to develop a design for a new building that is compatible with the scale of its surrounding buildings. Here's an image from DJR's plan. Here are eight surrounding buildings. Not one of them is 10 stories. And the floor plate is larger than all of these. One interesting thing I did notice at the HPC committee meeting was DJR's plans. If you look here, the image on the left shows the historic warehouse district buildings, 19th century and 20th century. The dark gray part is the 19th century. The light gray, the 20th century. In the plan to the right by DJR, it shows the blue as the 20th century and the yellow as the 19th century. The map is wrong and misleading to the HPC. Are they trying to justify their enormous buildings for making it look like their neighbors are 19th century warehouses? Here's a vicinity plan that I made from DJR's uh, proposal. I highlighted the streets in yellow and took the buildings and made their, their floor stories in red so you can read them easier. There's nine zones in this vicinity. I'm going to go by and name the tallest buildings in the zone. Bookman Stacks, eight stories. Vicinity two, 530 North, four stories. Vicinity three, Duffy Paper, seven stories. 
Vicinity four, designer guild building, six stories. Vicinity five, this is where 419 is located. Internet exchange is four stories. Vicinity six, security warehouse, or Fifth Avenue loft, seven stories. A parking ramp of seven stories. Dock Street Flats at five stories. And the Hewing Hotel at five stories. So how many buildings were on all these lists? We had 30 surrounding buildings. Zero buildings were 10 stories. Zero buildings were 140 feet. Do you know what building were not on the DJR's vicinity map? One of them was L3, which I do love that building. Seven stories though. The main one I want to bring up, the Ford, the Ford Center. Why is this not on the map? It's not one of the surrounding buildings that received notice of the public hearing. It's not even on DJR's plans. It's on the cover. For their vicinity report, surrounding buildings, it's not even in the general area. Where is the Ford Center? Tucked away on the very edge of the historic district blocked by the huge 4th Street exit ramp. Also blocked by a garbage incinerator and the Twin Stadium. Also blocked by the hideous Be The Madge building. 419 project is in the heart of the North Loop. It cannot be compared to the Ford Center. It needs to be to scale with the surrounding buildings. Here's another picture of the surrounding buildings by DJR. We need to make this right. We need to have this building to scale. I want to see this building built, but I want it with done within reason. Thank you for all your time. Thank you. Excellent appeal presentation. All right, would anyone else like to speak from the public? Give anyone a chance? Sure, come on up. Please state your name and address for the record. Anna Gillette, 401 North 2nd Street. Um, even though my address is 2nd Street, I actually front Washington. I'm on the other side of the building and I actually will be looking directly at this project. Um, I spoke at length at the earlier uh, Heritage Preservation Meeting. So if that's all in there, I don't really need to go back in there. I also submitted an email because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to make it today. So I'm not gonna touch on all the points that you just made and I completely agree with you. Thank you for doing this. And there are many of us who feel this way in the neighborhood. Um, the one thing I did wanna bring up, which is irritating to me and I've been talking to the North Loop Neighborhood Association about this. I want you to take their point of view with a grain of salt because I consider myself someone very on top of things in the neighborhood. I've lived here 12 years. You know that I pay attention. I'm on their email list for agendas. I go to meetings as I can. They send out agendas that don't include development on the agendas. So many of us miss that this was even coming down the pike. So they have been hearing from certain constituents, businesses who want parking for their employees. However, all the residents you know, many of us don't want more parking. We don't want to deal with more traffic. We don't want to deal with more emissions. And we live here all day long. We're not just coming into work and leaving. We're actually here. And so I just want you to take that into consideration. I've actually asked them to start putting actual development addresses on their agendas so that those of us who care can actually start coming because we can't go to every single meeting. Nobody really can. That's what the representation is for. However, I, for one, and I know many others, if they had seen that address pop up on an agenda, would have made a point to be there. And I've been very clear with some of the leaders on that organization that I don't feel well represented by them at all. 
on this topic. And it's not just 419. There's another project coming up further up Washington. It's the same issue. So anyway, totally agree. This is out of scale with the character of the neighborhood, the livability issues, people being able to have sky, light. And it's not just, you know, people who live there. It's also just pedestrians, the pedestrian experience there. It's just going to completely alter it. And it is going to set a precedent once a 10 story goes up. I mean, even eight stories is cutting close as far as I'm concerned when everything else, as you know, has come in at six, seven. I mean, we could just, you've named a list of them. I mean, Whole Foods, T3, they mentioned there's no, nobody living that next to this building. It's just not true. We've got security warehouse, we've got Fifth Avenue lofts that are gonna be directly impacted by this. Not to mention right across the railroad tracks are two, the Dock Street Flats buildings are right there. I mean, how much closer can you be? Um, I guess that's it. I just wanted to make sure to make those additional points. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure. Hi. Uh, my name is Zach Stoffrin. I also live at 401 North 2nd Street. I do face Washington, so this would directly impact my view, and I feel overshadow our whole side of the building. I want to thank Jared for doing this. I completely agree with this point. Um, and also just reiterate that the North Loop Association, um, I'm, I'm sure they send this out. I'm not actively involved. I have spent four years in the neighborhood, just became a new owner in the neighborhood. Um, I'm sure they represent some views, but they certainly don't represent mine and I believe many other residents. I'd also like to thank Lisa until she sent this letter uh, to our building. I had no idea the project. I understand that's uh, equally my fault. Um, but I was, I came up, I came here today mostly sickened by the fact of the amount of parking and the argument for the parking. Um, as many of us here that are arguing this live in the neighborhood. I walk that neighborhood every night. I don't know if some of the other people can vouch for that statement. Um, I do not see the scramble and the mad dash on 99% of the nights for people to try to find parking. In fact, the fourth um, street, as we're calling it, ramp and many others, I find empty. And for our building to be overshadowed by this, um, and I think he's already pointed out many of the great um, ideas about how we're stretching the height of this, but for me, I can just imagine walking by this building every night, um, seeing multi-levels empty, and to know our view was blocked by that personally will make me sick to my stomach. Um, I don't know the calculations, the differences, and what is required for the potential office space, um, and I get all of that as valid. I, too, want to see this project. I love every new restaurant that comes in the neighborhood, every new office space. I love how it's growing. I think it positively impacts us all in the neighborhood, but I see no reason why it can't be six stories, um, as I know that can get one additional level being subset in that parking lot and be equal height to the internet exchange building that's next to it and equal to all the ones around it. Um, we've brought up the Ford Center and many other buildings, I think even down on 7th Avenue, and I just don't see how it compares because this is directly around other buildings that are four or five stories. And also bring up the fact that it is at the entry point of the North Loop and it is gonna impact everything north of there. So it is not just about everything surrounding it, it's gonna impact everything behind it. And that is also my, my biggest concern with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Sure. Hi, my name is Jackie Noble. I live at 618 uh, North Washington. I live in Jarrett's building. My, I have a question. Was there a feasibility study done on what kind of um, percentage increase we're going to see in traffic? I know in Washington we just have two single lanes with a middle lane for turning and then turning on to fifth. Does anyone know if one was done? I don't believe this project requires a PPM, tra Transportation Management Plan, PMP. So Would that be something that we can ask for before we're including 481 parking spaces, which is over what the limit is? 
Your point is well taken, but okay. our stand, we have rules about which kinds of projects and size of projects that require that kind of study, and this one does not. It does not. Okay. I would just say that's a concern then. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Anyone else? Would the project team like to respond to anything that was included in the testimony? Usually give that option at the end. Just go ahead to go first. Yes, to the, to the traffic, I do believe that a traffic demand management plan is being prepared. Is that correct? And it will be evaluated as part of the planning commission application. Thank you. I stand correct. Okay. Um, if I may, then I'll close the public hearing. I did want to ask staff to come back up and um, because I did see in the HBC transcript quite a some discussion of the height. So just to note, the HPC did find that this met the criteria for certificate of appropriateness, and it seems like they based their decision about the height on the fact that this was the appearance of a 10-story building, and the guidelines call for buildings that are between two and 10 stories to fit within the guidelines. So could you just talk us through how you came to arrive at the conclusion of your staff recommendation and why the HPC agreed? And I do know that there were a number of conditions of approval put on the certificate of appropriateness that may relate to that. Uh, sure, Council Member Bender. Um, so in the staff report, when we were analyzing the uh, applicable guidelines related to scale, we noted the differences in floor plates um, and how they averaged out to generally meeting the intent of the guidelines and that the appearance from the exterior is that the building, as in the diagram that I had showed in my presentation, is that it would appear to be a 10-story building um, although by using the zoning code definition, it would not be a 10-story building. Um, we also, in the staff analysis, had um, noted that we were recommending a condition of approval that all of that parking be lined with an active use, and that with that active use lining the parking, um, that especially met the intent of the guideline. However, the Heritage Preservation Commission struck that condition of approval for the active use. Um, so. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure everyone heard that. So staff had recommended that the entire building, the entire facade be lined with an active use, and that was not included in the HPC's recommendation. Correct. There was a recommended condition of approval that all of that above grade parking, because there is a guideline that uh, requires that there shall not be any parking between, along a principal facade of a building. Um, so staff had recommended that uh, the parking be lined with an active use, like an office, um, and that played into the analysis for the height and scale. And that was condition five? Yeah, I think. Um, I don't have the numbers on there, but it was, so the guideline is 3.14 that says that off-street parking shouldn't be located along a principal facade, so that's uh, how we had recommended it be lined. Okay. And then, uh, just one last time. Could you remind us how the zoning code defines 10 stories versus the height of this building? Absolutely. So this diagram helps to explain it. So the zoning code defines stories um, essentially as between the floor and the floor above, um, and or if it go, or any portion of the building that goes over 14 feet would be more than uh, one story. So that's why the rooftop mechanical, which is 20 feet, counts as two stories. Um, and then all of those levels of parking count as a story uh, per the zoning code definition. So does the zoning code give us a total height that is 10 stories? It doesn't. So zoning code uh, regulates height through both height and stories. Right. Um, so it's 10 stories or 140 feet, whichever is less. And so that's where you can see in the diagram where 10 stories on this building would be and where 140 feet would be. Um, and then, so it's exceeding in both circumstances. But you're saying in the staff report that these numbers one through 10 are not typical story heights. Correct. So the parking, above grade parking levels are much shorter than a typical floor plate. So when, you, so when, you're, when you're looking in section, it clearly meets 15 stories. However, when you're looking in elevation, it would appear to be a 10-story building. However, I would note that it is, from the exterior, still the same amount of feet, um, so, but 10 stories. It okay. appears as 10 stories. Okay, but one could imagine us using the 140 feet as another measure of whether or not it fit within 
at least how the zoning code might define, define 10 stories. Correct, and 140 feet, um, the guideline that talks about the different floor heights says that the first floor should be between 14 and 21, and then the upper floor should be between 10 and 14. Um, so I think if you max out each of those, uh, the total height of a 10-story building would be 147 feet. Okay, thank you, that's very helpful. Uh, could you repeat that last measurement? Yes, so the zoning or the uh, warehouse district design guidelines say that the ground floor of a building should be between 14 and 21 feet, um, and then the upper story should be between 10 and 14 feet. And so if you use the 21, a 21 foot tall first floor and then 14 feet upper floors, I believe if I did my math correctly, the uh, maximum height would be 147 feet. And this, uh, this building is 168 feet tall, including the rooftop. So it would be 148 feet, excluding the rooftop. 148 feet, excluding the rooftop. The rooftop mechanical mechanical equipment. Equipment. Okay. Are there any other questions for staff? Council Member Fry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so how tall is it without excluding the rooftop? It would be 148 feet. And the uh, uh, zoning allows for? 140 feet. Okay. Council Member Goodman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Unfortunately, I didn't get my packet till this morning, so I was trying to scramble to um, get all the information. I, I, you don't have to stand there if you don't okay. want to, Ms. Steiner. Um, I understand the height issue pretty well, always have, and uh, I'm gonna move to grant the appeal and uh, I, and I would want to speak to that. And I think that um, Mr. Bromley, who I don't know and have never met, um, made a very convincing case if there are findings of fact required. I've never seen anyone come in actually and kind of point by point prove the points uh, so eloquently. Uh, this building is too tall and you guys know it because you got up and said you couldn't find another building in any area. The only thing you can find is the Ford building which isn't even in the sub area that your architects suggest. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think we have the ability to tell them that they have to be a lot less than 140. Uh, from where I sit, I think I would say take the average of all the buildings in the sub areas from four stories to eight and average that out and that would be about consistent with the character of the neighborhood. Um, I, I'm not, I don't want to get into what we should do to tell them how tall the building should be at this point. I think that they should go back and talk with the neighborhood sounds like the immediate neighbors or the appellants and council member Fry's office to determine kind of where we would be at going forward. Uh, but clearly this building is not in scale with the other buildings in the neighborhood. If it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a duck. This building is too tall and, and I, I only know what I heard today and read in the packet this morning and uh, it seems to me it's way too tall. Uh, but I don't know that we can limit it much beyond 140. But that would include the mechanical penthouse too. So, I mean, it could be, um, the, the, the guidelines say between two and 10, I think they should have to stick with the consistent character of the neighborhood. I buy that argument. I have a lot of B4N in my ward. I don't wanna see buildings of this height and size in my ward where there's a B4N, to be honest. Um, with regard to the parking, I have mixed feelings about it. I can see how bigger businesses like Arctic Cat and others, Select Comfort that just announced they're moving into downtown yesterday with 900 new jobs without any regional economic agency, by the way, helping them do so. Um, they need parking, I understand it, but I think the appellants make a fairly compelling case that there is parking actually in the neighborhood and there's a lot of it because the neighborhood has been focused on recruiting residents who are willing to walk or live with one car. We've put in a bike lane on Washington. We're trying to get younger millennials to not have two cars. So I can understand that. I, I, I will leave it to those who have more experience with parking and have more opinions about parking than me to determine what the appropriate amount would be. My issue is height. And for that reason alone, I, I'm gonna, I have moved to grant the appeal. Any discussion on the motion? Council Member Fry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Although I am not on this committee and will not be voting today, I, I would like to speak to it. Uh, so, you know, clearly there are a couple of different conflicting items within our zoning code, one of them dealing with the number of, of feet, uh, the other one dealing with the number of stories. Uh, our zoning code very clearly allows for 10 stories, and this is more than that. 
Uh, however, our zoning code also allocates a certain number of feet per story. And in this case, it also exceeds it by approximately, what is it, eight feet or so, um, uh, plus uh, the electric on the top. Um, I, from a personal standpoint, I don't necessarily consider the electrical at the top um, to be part of the building. building. It certainly is minimal, um, but I can understand how when you need some sort of objective criteria, it's included. Um, uh, a couple other things I just kind of wanted to mention. Um, first off is it Mr. Uh, Bromley, Mr. Jarrett, um, uh, thank you for your comments. You put together a very articulate argument. Uh, we did email you back on October 5th. My staff gave you all the information you needed and asked if you need any additional. Um, I'd be happy to forward you the information we have. It. Um, it, 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 the email was sent on October 5th, um, uh, but we'll be happy to send it again. Um, uh, so I appreciate your argument. Um, you made it very articulately. Um, you know, here's the constant compromise and negotiation that's happening in North Loop. And I, I do have a respect for all sides here. Uh, I don't use a car. So parking is not an issue for me. I bike pretty much everywhere. Um, however, I can tell you with 100% certainty that the far and away the number one call that we get from both North Loop residents as well as North Loop businesses is a concern about um, limited or no parking. Um, that's far and away the number one call that we get in our office. And so um, as the representative of the area, I am, I am sympathetic. Uh, it, with this particular building, I appreciate the fact that they're planning ahead for a time when parking and cars and specifically cars with uh, that are not uh, automated uh, will no longer be in existence and so they're able to knock down the ramps and then include office space going forward i think that is a good addition um there i certainly don't want to set a precedent in north loop um, to allow for uh, buildings that go beyond what the zoning code allows and um and so uh, i would like to sort of figure out where that's going forward i'm not I'm not um, specifically, uh, I, I think, so what I'm saying is I think that there's room for a compromise and a way to find a, a, a to get to a building that'll, that will function. All right, any further discussion? Council Member Reich. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, very uh, uh, good commentary here uh, for guidance for my vote. Uh, but I will note that um, there's certainly uh, some uh, commendable uh, exercise in terms of the look of the building. I mean, there's some buildings that slipped in the North Loop that I'm like, wow, what's historical about that kind of material or the cheese grater balcony thing. Um, so there's been lots of compromise in terms of the historical character of the historical district, and I think that happens in a growing city. Compromises are made, as Councilmember Fry has pointed out, and I hope that's pursued. I think this building, uh, certainly in size aside, which has been today's debate, um, really did go out of its way to be a building that though its scale might be a little different, it certainly looks like it's in the, in the same language of a warehouse. And I sort of applaud that. Uh, the issues of parking, that's a local issue. Good luck, Jacob. Um, have fun with that. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'll note that I, I think an alternative solution here would have been to um, deny the appeal with the additional conditions that spoke to the height limits, um, but I'm willing to support the motion as it stands. Just want to make a couple comments. Um, one, I, I did note as well, Council Member Reich's comment that the building is clearly designed, you know, within the guidelines. And I think the HPC discussion reflected that the level of detail that they got into to discuss those historic qualities, I think, um, demonstrates that about the building. I um, personally would have supported the um, staff recommended uh, um, condition that the active uses wrap the um, garage and that would be also something we could have added as part of the planning commission reviews and i would also say that the district parking is a question that would have also come up as part of the cup discussion my perspective on that is mixed i am no fan of parking as probably everyone in minneapolis knows i do think that there are advantages to district parking though and there's a project in my ward that was built before i took office that had significant 
significantly more parking than I, I think I would want to see in any one building, but that has allowed for additional buildings to come in in the surrounding area that use that parking, and then those have had little to no parking, which has really improved the design of those buildings. So I think there's a push and pull there with district parking. I actually think it's something we should probably do more of in Minneapolis. Um, and in here, the design of the parking, I think, is well integrated into the building, particularly with that recommended um, addition that staff had made. So I would say I think this building is really going in the right direction. Um, the issue with the height um, seems that most of my colleagues disagree with the HPC's decision. Uh, so then I will say, uh, all those in favor, did Councilmember Goodman, did you want to make another comment? Um, uh, Madam Chair, I agree with you with regard to the staff recommendations on wrapping as well, and I would uh, dire direct staff to reiterate those recommendations as they come forward. Again, I think that that has to be fixed. I disagree with the um, HPC on that issue also. Um, so I want to make sure we're clear that a number of people on the panel also agree with the staff recommendations with regard to the wrapping of the retail around the parking. If, if they should determine that number of parking spaces should be there. I also concur with Council Member Reich. I think the building is beautifully designed. Um, I don't think there's any objection. I, I don't think the neighbors think that. And it's very hard to design a building in a historic district that actually doesn't look fake. I think this one actually looks pretty good. All right, all those in favor then of denying, or excuse me, of granting the appeal on item number one, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. That concludes our agenda for today. Thank you, everyone. You go. Uh, and I need to direct staff. I need to direct staff to prepare the findings uh, that supports our motion. Yeah, I guess I'd ask the appellant to do the findings. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. That concludes our agenda. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone who came today.